Aloha, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Thinking Things Through, Critical Thinking for Critical Times. I'm your host, Michael Sukoff. We are pleased to have with us today Douglas Kellner, Emeritus Professor of Philosophy at UCLA. Today, we're going to be discussing Herbert Marcuse and his relevance for today, War, Climate, and Democracy, A Way Forward. Professor Kellner recently retired after teaching philosophy for 25 years at University of Texas at Austin and Philosophy of Education and Cultural Studies for 25 years at UCLA. He probably is the foremost expert, in my opinion, on the work of Marcuse in the English-speaking world. And on a personal note, I know Doug through our participation in the International Herbert Marcuse Society. Welcome to the show, Doug. Well, thank you, Michael. Pleasure to be here. That's great. Um, so we have a lot to cover here. Uh, and I'm going to try and keep the conversation moving forward, but I want to start out with uh, what is critical theory? We've talked a lot about critical theory on this show. I've had two or three guests talk about it, but what is critical theory for you? And um, then I want to segue into Herbert Marcuse and his critical theory. Well, I identify myself with the critical theory of the Frankfurt School. So when I use the term critical theory, as Herbert Marcuse, T.W. Adorno, Eric Fromm, and their colleagues used yeah. it. It refers to a critical theory of contemporary society. And what's distinctive about critical theory, it's a critique of society as a totality. So it sees capitalism, for instance, as being the organizing principle in the uh, capitalist world. But it also sees our being on earth, you know, that uh, our everyday lives are grounded in an environment. Um, and in this totality that critical theory is analyzing, they focus on the principles or the institutions of domination and liberation. So they show how individuals are dominated, controlled, repressed, but they point out pathways to liberation. And particularly Marcuse has a dialectic of theory and practice. So he critiques the problems with contemporary society, but then he addresses solution and practice that will try to create progressive social change. Now, let me stop you right there. For our listeners who may not know anything about any of these concepts, could you give an example of what, what Marcuse meant by domination? Well, domination uh, would be labor. For instance, we have to go to work, most of us, eight hours a day. That uh, survival requires getting a job, and that requires a 40-hour week of uh, employment. Uh, and this was, you know, my middle-class family and all my relatives basically worked these this uh, life. I spent uh, two summers working in a factory in Chicago when I was in college to earn money. So I got sort of a sense of what Marcuse called the alienation of labor, that you're not doing a job you have any control over. You're sort of a cog in the machine. And so you're dominated by the labor system and by your boss and the technology at the workplace etc. This is one of the reasons guys like you and me become college professors because and writers and researchers, because we can choose more of uh, how we want to spend our uh, life. And uh, hopefully we like teaching and interacting, you know, with students and young people. Absolutely. And for the vast majority of people on this planet, I would assert that they are doing forms of labor or work that is not satisfying to them, that may be pretty meaningless. I mean, of course, there are different levels of this. Right. But uh, yeah, I think that's a great example of domination. Now you mentioned, well, you mentioned, I think, the dialectic. Uh, maybe we can get into that later rather than get sidetracked by that now. Okay, so let's move into, um, who was Herbert Marcuse? Um, you know, tell us a little bit about him and, and, we'll, and then we'll get into his ideas and why you think they're important. Okay. Herbert Marcuse was a German 
Jewish American member of the Frankfurt School, which was a group of scholars that immigrated from uh, Germany under uh, fascism uh, yeah. because they were Jewish, they were radical, and uh, they were affluent and privileged enough to be able to get out. And to, uh, they ended up at uh, Columbia University, which was my uh, alma mater. And then Adorno and Horkheimer, as you know, came to retire in uh, Los Angeles, close yeah. to where I live. And Marcusa taught for many years in uh, University of California at uh, La Jolla, where he had Angela Davis and many others as his uh, students. So uh, Marcusa and the Proctor School came to the U.S. And Marcusa uh, went and worked for the U.S. government in the fight against uh, fascism with the OSS that was the intelligence service of the day, the predecessor- Office of Secret Services, I think. Office of Secret Service that was the predecessor to the CIA. Yeah. And of course they focused on Nazi Germany. It was mm -hmm. World War II and yes. Marcuse stayed uh, after uh, the war for about five or six years uh, working for uh, the State Department, yes. focusing on uh, communism and Soviet Marxism, it was the Cold War. But then he chose to uh, have an academic uh, life and yes. went to teach at Brandeis yes. uh, University and uh, spent his next year's uh, teaching mm -hmm. and writing and being yes. a father of the new left and a political okay. activist. Okay, well, uh, I wanna stop you right there. Uh, maybe we'll get to that, but this moniker of father of the new left. At some point, I'd like to unpack that a little bit because it's kind of like, uh, it's a gloss of what he actually did. Right. Right. First, I, I want to say that I was a member of the new left. I was a graduate yeah. student at Columbia University. Ah. And I heard uh, Marcuse lecture oh at uh, Columbia in 1969. And he was mm. talking about the new left and uh, revolution. And mm -hmm. the next day uh, we had a reception for him in the philosophy department. And so I went to that reception and then Marcuse wanted to go to the West End bar where Jack Kerouac and Allen Ginsberg and the Beatniks went. So I actually got to drink beer with uh, Herbert Marcuse. And oh my goodness. Marxism. And that was the day that uh, I uh, uh, met him. Wow, that's wonderful to hear about that. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, there's so much we could say about him and his life. Um, uh, you know, we've both written about him. And, but maybe we should talk a little bit more about his ideas. Like, what of his ideas do you think are, are most important for us to understand today? Okay, I would say it's both his critical theory of capitalist society and mm -hmm. his theory of radical social change and particularly mm -hmm. uh, human uh, emancipation. Yes. Uh, I might say just the word about the uh, new left versus the old left. The old okay. left was the Communist Party in the United States. It was the Soviet Union as the model of really existing socialism that the old left saw as its idea. Right. And this is, yeah, maybe between around the early 1920s up until World War II? The, so the Soviet Union actually lasted until 1989. Yeah, where, right. Where it collapsed with the collapse of communism. Right, yes. But unfortunately, Russia has uh, now Vladimir Putin, who is a sort of uh, old KGB, old sort of Stalinist kind yes. of guy, but that's a whole nother uh, story. Yeah, that's another show. <laughs> but Marcuse, we should say, while he was at uh, Columbia, I think, wrote a book called Soviet Marxism. Yes. So Marcuse was for a form of democratic socialism, which we yes. would identify today with uh, Bernie uh, Sanders. Uh, uh -huh. and uh democratic uh, uh social mm -hmm. and um marcusa also though was a theorist of liberation ranging from sexual emancipation 
yes. to uh, democratic uh, control of society and yes. uh, learning, studying philosophy and developing your critical uh, faculties, et cetera. So this is yes. a whole different project than orthodox yeah. uh, Marxism uh, was. Right, and orthodox Marxism meaning? Meaning the Soviet Union's ideology I of see. a dogmatic kind of scientific socialism that took a very uh, ideological uh, interpretation of Marx and Engels who actually are great historians and great critical theorists. They were analyzing their contemporary society and the changes in contemporary society that yes. were brought about by developments of capitalism, new right. technologies, yeah. uh, new crises of the environment, right. like right. fascism, war. Right. Uh, so the critical theorists were always developing their theory, as did Karl Marx. So they were, that's what a critical theorist is, is, right, is right. anti-dogmatist. And that's okay. the, what Marcuse opposed. Right, and I just wanna ask you, you use the term ideology. Uh, that's a term that's in common language today. It's thrown about as if everybody knows what it is. But uh, Marcuse and the Frankfurt School theorists had a particular notion which goes back to Karl Marx of what ideology was. Could you just say a sentence or two about ideology? Sure. Um, ideology is our, ideologies are the ideas of the ruling class. So uh, during uh, Marcuse's uh, growing up in uh, Germany, this was first the ideas of the Weimar Republic of liberal yes. democratic capitalism, and then uh -huh. when fascism took over, the dominant ideology was fascism. Just yes. as uh, Russia had a czarist regime where the ideology was yes. God and the czar are the fathers of uh, Russia, whereas uh, Lenin and the communists had a Marxist ideology. Right. So the dominant ideas of a society are the dominant uh, ideologies. Right. And this is what Marcuse focused on in yes. American ideology of the consumer society, of uh -huh. uh, bureaucracy in the state, of right. domination. Right. I think it's important to, to also note that um, for Marcuse and the Frankfurt School theorists, ideology did not just refer to the ruling ideas. It did do that. But there was something about ideology that was false or distorted or different, didn't give people the real picture of what was actually going on. I don't know if you want to respond to that or not. Absolutely. I mean, that's, I think, the key insight of the Frankfurt School of yes. the ideology, yeah. which uh, basically is their theory of the culture industry, that ideology in contemporary capitalist societies mm -hmm. is conveyed by the capital, the culture industry, which mm -hmm. during, uh, newspapers, uh, magazines, the internet, newspaper, right, the movies, radio, yes. television. So it's not just ideas that you get on news or documentaries, right. but it's entertainment. So right. Right. individualism is a dominant ideology of capitalist society. Right. And of course, Hollywood films and you know yeah. television individualism is. No, I yeah, Every, go ahead. Yeah. Everywhere in culture. That's a great segue to my next uh, series of questions is, okay, individualism, that's, that's an ideology. I, I assume you'd agree with that. It's a set of ideas about how we should be in the world, uh, you know, generally speaking. But anyway, um, so I want to talk about, Marcuse also talked, especially in, not well in, in throughout his work, but particularly in his earlier work about the individual and what he later called the whole individual. So I was wondering if you could say a little bit about why was Marcuse so interested in the individual? What did he mean by that? And what did he mean by the whole individual? Well, I'm, I'm glad you brought that question up because uh, the critique of the American ideology 
of individualism mm -hmm. uh, could not be taken, but they were against the individual. In fact, uh, Marcus yes. and all the members of the Frankfurt School were for individual emancipation. And this freedom. freedom. This is not yeah. something you find in uh, Karl uh, Marx. Yes. And they also have a theory, and this is particularly Marcuse, of the full development of the individual. So education is very important. The development of thought, of knowledge, wow. of critical uh, faculties, yes. uh, of freedom of choice. Uh, right. uh, but making choices uh, that are are governed by positive values. And right. for instance, uh, they saw the individual as having a body and being part of nature. Right. So okay. we have to conserve nature. Uh, we Absolutely. have to, to love, you know, and cooperate like Marcuse wrote with other yeah. people and not be in competition. One of Marcuse's big books in the 1950s was Eros and yes. Civilization. He brought Freud and subjectivity of the individual, of developing right. your ability, again, consciousness raising right. in the 60s, right. developing your full subjectivity. Right. Now, uh, I was wondering if we could just say what, what we mean by subjectivity here. Is it the same as consciousness? Is it different? How does it apply to real people in the real world? Well, this is, again, a Frankfurt School innovation okay. mm -hmm. uh, because they root the individual mm -hmm. in the body, but also mm -hmm. in society. So we're all functioning as individuals in a given uh, uh, society. Right, right. Uh, so what is radical? What is subjective? What is radical about sub radical subjectivity? What does that mean? Well, I got this term from Marcuse. Oh, okay. One point that I sh we should revert to in terms of Marcuse's key ideas is yes. the notion of the great refusal. Yes. That, uh, Marcuse developed this in terms of an analysis of the, uh, the civil rights movement that Martin Luther King and uh, the people of uh, color of yes. his uh, civil rights uh, movement refused right. to take racism anymore, refused to take the inequality and oppression mm -hmm. of their situation and organized and struggled to try to uh, realize right. American uh, democracy. Right, uh, right. So, but radical subjectivity is the sense, the awareness of the forms of oppression and the forms of struggle you can take in order to uh, liberate yourself from these right. forms of re repression. Right, and I just want to add that we've talked on this show about the term radical, and uh, I gave the example of, uh, well, the term radical comes from the Latin radicalis, right. which means going to the root of something. Right. And this idea, this sense of radical was very much a part of Karl Marx's understanding as well as Marcuse and the Frankfurt School. So I just want to add that in. Right. And in fact, Karl Marx in an uh, 19, 1843 essay wrote yeah. that exactly what you said. To be radical is to go to the there roots. There you go. And right. thus, we want to go to the roots of human beings and their forms of repression and the Absolutely. possibilities of liberation. And that was Marcuse's life project was oh, yes. to update Marx, but also to analyze things like subjectivity mm -hmm. and eros and uh, liberation uh, right. and the individual uh, right. and ec ecological issues and issues of love and sexuality that Absolutely. Marx didn't analyze, which Marcuse thought was an important part of yes. beings and our subjectivities and our existences. Well, I'd love to have you back because we're only scratching the surface here. We got about five minutes left. So I want to segue uh, by reading this quote from Marcuse. It's his book, The Aesthetic Dimension Toward a Critique of Marxist Aesthetics. And uh, a lot could be said about this book. It's one of Marcuse's last books. 
And, um, but here's what I want to read to you. Um, in this passage, he's talking about ideology and the rational subject, uh, the subjectivity of individuals and how that tends to be di dissolved under advanced capitalism. And then here's, here's the quote. Marcuse is saying, a major prerequisite of revolution is minimized, namely the fact that the need for radical change must be rooted in the subjectivity of individuals themselves. So Doug, why for Marcuse is this the case? Why is he saying that radical change needs to be rooted in the individual themselves? Let, let me um, connect that with the aesthetic dimension and what Marcuse's vision of uh, art was and the role of art in yes. human liberation and mm -hmm. in the development of individuality. Marcuse okay. was a great uh, German uh, in the Bildungs tr tradition a great uh, theorist of uh, Cult culture, right? Bildung? Culture and yeah. of uh, aesthetics and art. And yeah. he believed that uh, art could be an important form of human liberation and yes. the development of the uh, individual. So Mark uh -huh. uh, wrote the aesthetic dimension that he thought was a dimension of liberation where individuals can liberate themselves through aesthetic education. Now, yes. this goes back to German uh, Marcuse's doctoral dissertation, yes, yes. German artist novel, which right. is about uh, Goethe and Schiller up to uh, Thomas Mann, and yes. these novels that wrote about individual liberation of okay. finding yourself, becoming an individual, yeah. etc. Right, so, right. Marcuse found this uh, tradition of uh, radical individualism of, you know, yes. revolt against society, of yes. uh, development of full individuality. He right. found in German culture and literature, right. he right. it, loved classical music, you know, Beethoven, yes. Mozart, all of, all of this, these forms of culture develop the sensibility of individuals, yes. not yeah. just the rationality, the yes. uh, intellect, which is important. I mean, Marcuse is obviously in some ways very much of a, you know, a rationalist and right. he has a German idealist. The yes, yes. Ideas. He you wanted know, to integrate mind and body. Mind and body integration, which is why he thought ecology was so important. Okay, great. And one thing I want to point out about the importance of Marcuse, he was, uh, he popularized and struggled in the major political movements of the day. Absolutely. Also, the yeah. civil rights movement that he ends, One Dimensional Man was citing. Then the uh, anti-war movement. That was the lecture that I heard during the yeah. uh, oh. Vietnam War. He yes. was one of the first to talk about uh, ecology and to affirm the ecological uh, right. movement, that we're in a situation of ecological crisis which we yeah. see exploding today. Okay, yeah, and I, 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 I wanna get back to that uh, very quickly. I just wanna mention the women's movement. And, uh, thank you. And then <laughs> that was the other important uh, part of yes. Marcuse's analysis of individuals and liberation were gendered individuals. Absolutely. And we're in male dominated patriarchal capitalist societies. So yeah. Marcuse was one of the first Marxists to do a critique of patriarchy and to affirm women's yeah. liberation. At the same time, he um, affirmed uh, ecological uh, liberation, sexual Absolutely. liberation, uh, et cetera. So right. uh, gender politics is a very important uh, part of Marcuse. So Doug, we're, we're almost out of time, but I gotta ask you, so what does all this mean for us in practical terms? We're facing a climate crisis, a climate emergency. Uh, how can, in a word, you know, a sentence or two, how can Marcuse help us to both understand the, the crises we're in, and there's more than one, but let's focus on the environmental crisis to both understand it and 
how can it empower his ideas empower us as citizens of Hawaii or the US to make a difference on these issues? I know that's a huge question, but. Well, this is why Marcuse is so important. Not only did he affirm the new left and all these liberation struggles from women's yes. liberation to gay liberation, but also he affirmed the importance of the ecology movement Absolutely. and he saw ecological crisis as one of our biggest uh, problems, which I'm just coming out of the greatest heat wave of you know, years in Los right. Angeles. And yes. of course we had in Florida, the most destructive hurricane in over, you know, a hundred years. So we're obviously right. in a situation of ecological crisis, but Marcuse not only does an analysis of the problem, but he gives you a, a answer to what the solution is and it's movement, it's political struggle, yes, it's absolutely. activism. And this also is relevant for gender, race, class, all of the forms of oppression today. Marcuse, so I, I saw Marcuse as very important when the Occupy movement, the Arab uprising, uh, yes. Black Lives Matter, the Me Too movement, all of these mo new movements that have appeared in the last uh, you know, decades, are in some ways very Marcusean, that they were ones that Marcuse would have affirmed, joined, supported. So that's what our lesson is from Marcuse. We have to support all of these important movements, the ecology movement, the right. black, brown uh, power uh, movement, youth right. movements, um, all of the political you know, issues and crises uh, we're um, facing today. Marcuse told us we have to focus on the most important ones and we have to be activists in the movements that are addressing these problems. So that for me is Marcuse's legacy. Wow, what a wonderful note to end on. Thanks so much, uh, Doug. Thanks for joining us today and we'd love to have you back sometime soon. Sure, my pleasure, Michael. This has been Thinking Things Through, Critical Thinking for Critical Times on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Michael Sukoff. Please join us again two weeks from today at the same time, wherever you may be. Mahalo. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.